Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here to talk about one of my very favorite things, perfume. This is my July in review perfume haul where I go over full bottles and decants that I have procured through the month, tell you my thoughts, whether I like them, whether I don't. If it's a full bottle, rest assured I have sampled it and liked it. The decants, maybe I do, maybe I don't. So let's go ahead and jump in because I do have six full bottles and some decants to go through. All of them I did purchase myself except for one, and I'll start out with that one. And this is one that was sent over by Twisted Lily. However, I have sampled this many times in the past and knew that I loved it. And this is by Zerjoff, and it is from the Shooting Stars collection, and it is called Starlight. Now, I only have one other Zerjoff, and it's Commandante, and I've talked about how much I love that. I do like Zerjoff as a house. The only issue that I have had with them is that they don't tend to last that long on me. And I don't know if it's something in the formula where my skin just eats it because I have heard so many other people say that they last an eternity on their skin, but I don't get the best longevity. However, I do get a little bit better with Commandante and I do get better with this. Now, when I say better, it's still only about four to five hours, but there are some scents, and I've talked about this in the past, that I just don't care if I have to reapply. And sometimes by then, I wanna reapply something else anyways. But this one, y'all, I have talked in the past about how cardamom is one of my very favorite notes. It is definitely in the top five of my favorite notes of all time in perfumery. And this is cardamom heaven. So if you love cardamom and you haven't tried this, definitely do. If you don't like cardamom, you're not going to like this because to me, this is very heavy in the cardamom. And then it has a little bit of spice to it because it does have some cinnamon in it and some cloves, which I smell the cloves more than I do the cinnamon. In fact, to my nose, the cardamom and the cloves are the most prominent in this scent. It dries down with an amber and cedar base but I don't miss those cloves or that cardamom throughout the entire wear. They don't disappear as the perfume dries down. It also has some almond in it, which to me, I don't really detect other than it lends a little bit of a creaminess to the overall scent. Y'all, this to me is the quintessential fall scent. Now, I have been wearing it in the heat because I love it so much. And it's not that it's too much in the heat, but because it has that spiciness and the cardamom and that just very cozy, warm feeling to it, it is absolute perfection in the fall. So again, if you love cardamom, please get your nose on this. It is probably my favorite Zerge off that I've ever smelled and I have smelled quite a few of them. So definitely, Get your nose on Zerjoff Starlight. And again, you can get this at Twisted Lily. They also have samples, which I always recommend. And I have a discount code that I will put down below. Let's talk about one that technically I bought, but technically I didn't because I got it with my points at Ulta. And this is the newest flanker in the Armani My Way line. And it is the My Way Parfum. So definitely a little bit of a different bottle than the other two, Original My Way and My Way Intense. It's a deeper blue, and then it has the same kind of stone top to it. Here's the thing, y'all. I love My Way Intense. My Way is fine. I ha actually have a de of like not a decant, but a travel spray of that. I owned My Way Intense and loved it. However, I sold it when I got my nose on this one because I didn't think I needed both of them but this is by far my favorite of the three up until this point. And I first smelled this in Harvey Nichols when I was in Scotland and I was like, oh my goodness, I love it. And Chad liked it, which he's not a huge like white floral because my ways are tuberose dominant. However, I do feel like this one is the least dominant in tuberose because they added iris and ambrette. And to me, what that does is it makes it a little bit deeper. It still has that sweetness of the tuberose it's not as bubblegummy. I mean, the DNA is there, but it's not as bubblegummy as the other two. And the iris lends a little bit of like a um, lipsticky makeup type of vibe to it, which iris tends to do, especially when it's mixed with other sweet notes. But the ambrette makes it a little bit deeper. It grounds a little bit, grounds it a little bit more, and it makes it just a little bit more elevated. 
in my opinion. I don't think the wear is any different from the other two. I get a decent longevity on this, probably four to six hours. But I do think this one is more year round than the other two, in my opinion. And it's not to say that you can't wear perfume whenever you wanna wear it. But the other two, the original and the intense, were definitely more like spring dominated, maybe even summer. And this one is gonna be perfect all year round. So if you like the My Way line, but you wanted it to be a little less bubblegummy sweet you wanted something a little bit deeper but still has that dna definitely check this out and i think if you like the armani Privé rouge malachite you are gonna like this it is definitely not the same they are not dupes for each other but they are in the same realm of that really sophisticated tuberose smell this one i talked about in one of my i think playing with new makeup videos and this is by sora dora and it is called mandorle now i got a discovery set from Aqueous Scottsdale, who carries this line now. And I was like, you know what? I have definitely found a favorite. I like a lot of them. In fact, there are probably three that are my top favorites within the line. But the good thing about the Discovery Set is that when you buy it, you get that amount off of a full bottle. So I was able to smell all of them, pick my favorite, and then put that towards a full bottle. And this is what the bottle looks like. Probably my favorite bottle shape is a cube like this. Very pretty marbleized top with the SD for Soradora. And then it does say Mandorle on the back. This to me is a very creamy, almost almondy fragrance. It does have rum in it, which y'all know is like one of my very favorite notes of all time. It has some caramel, so it lends to some sweetness and a suede that lends to like a softness in the perfume. It is very, it's dark to me. Dark, not dark in a bad way, but I tend to think of either color or texture when I smell something. And this is dark to me in an almost cherry way. Now cherry is not listed on the notes, at least not on Fragrantica, but it does give that sense of a cherry smell but like a dark cherry added in with cacao and rum. So like a rum soaked dark cherry that is then dipped in chocolate. That's what I get from this. That's exactly what I get from this. Mm. And it is so good. So, so good. Now, again, I have been wearing this in the heat, but it definitely is a deeper fragrance. It's a little bit heavier. So it is to me going to shine the most in the fall and winter and it's a moderate longevity on me about four hours but it lasts way longer on clothes so i have put it on a shirt and i will still be able to smell it the next time i wear it if i don't wash it in between so definitely higher longevity on clothes moderate on skin but such a gorgeous fragrance so definitely check out the discovery set if you haven't tried anything from them and you're curious because again i love it when the companies allow you to put that money towards a full bottle I feel like the last time I did a haul, a lot of the scents that I had were very cinnamon dominant. I don't know why I didn't plan it that way. I wasn't out looking for cinnamon fragrances, but I only have one this time. And it is one that was a blind buy. So this is actually, I think I said in the beginning that I'd sampled all of them. This was not something that I had sampled. It was something that I just knew looking at the notes and reviews that I would like. And this is from a brand called Label. And I've tried, I think, vanilla from them, and I like as well. But this is Maltol and Cinnamon Eau de Parfum. This says it's a floral, fruity, gourmand fragrance. I do not smell any florals in this. And I really don't smell a lot of fruit. Although there is blackberry in this, and I guess if I really tried, I could maybe pick that out. But to me, I get cinnamon. Cinnamon. And then this other note, which maybe it's the Maltol. I don't really know what that's supposed to smell like, but it gives it a little bit of a, I don't want to say tart edge because it's not tart. It's very hard. This one's very hard to describe. And I wouldn't suggest anybody blind buying this. This was just something that I was like, you know what? Caramel, walnut, cinnamon, red currant, blackberry, benzoin, vanilla, because I really love benzoin too. Sandalwood musk. I'm going to like it. And I do. And it's very hard to describe. It is very hard to describe. It is a cinnamon, but it is not an overly warm cinnamon. It almost has a little bit of a metallic edge to it. And then that benzoin and the vanilla and the musk comes through as it dries down. 
And this is out of probably all the ones I'm going to talk about. The Well, no, I have another one that, that is. But this is very unisex in my opinion. Meaning, I mean, all fragrances are unisex and can be worn by anyone. But I imagine this smelling really good on Chad as much as I enjoy smelling it on myself. I appreciate the simplicity of the bottle and the design. It wasn't that expensive for the, is it 50 mils? 50 mils that it comes with. It's different. It's way different than anything I have in my collection. I'm very glad to have added it. And I think in the fall is when I'm going to let this shine the most. Let's talk about one where I got a decant and I sprayed the decant and I promptly ordered the full bottle. And that doesn't always happen. I really want myself to go through an entire decant before I decide, am I still thinking about that scent? Do I really still want it? Is it really going to add anything to my collection? Have I sold something? that maybe I have similar to justify having it. Lots of things go through my head before I make a purchase, even though it doesn't seem like it since I seem to get a lot every month, but there is a process. However, when I smelled this one, there was no process other than contacting the company and ordering the perfume. And this is from Ormond Jane. I have talked about Ormond Jane a lot. I love Ormond Woman by them. It's one of my favorites that I have a full bottle of. This one is called Bukhara, I think that's how you pronounce it, B-U-K-H-A-R-A. -A. And this was made in collaboration with Fenwick, so it's not even available in the States. What I had to do was contact Ormond Jane directly and see if they would ship me a bottle, and they just sent me an invoice, and they very graciously, I mean, their customer service is excellent, graciously sent me over a bottle once I paid that invoice, and I was happy to, because this is a fruity floral perfume at its finest in my opinion and it may be because it has peach in it which it does it also has black currant on the top note with peach it has some tube rose in the middle which is one of my favorite florals to me the tube rose is not dominant it really is a very well blended formula with peach standing out as the fruit and then just florals in general because it also has jasmine and orange blossom in it then it has oud and cedarwood and vanilla and sandalwood on the base. So it's not sickeningly sweet. It is not too floral. Again, it's just a very nice mix of woody, fruity, and floral. And it's just beautiful. Now, I don't ever get the longest wear from Ormond Jane. Again, I get four to five hours. I just don't care because I love this so much. It's just right up my alley. It's the perfect fruity, floral, woody perfume. I love the bottle itself. I don't have an Ormond Jane orange and yellow bottle. I know they sell other fragrances within this same type of bottle, but my woman is just in a clear bottle. And there's a little bit of something green in here, which to my nose is in every single Ormond Jane fragrance. It's kind of their DNA. I don't quite know what it is, especially looking from the listed notes, but it has almost a little hint of Ormond Woman in it with some added fruits and florals, which, okay, perfect. I love Ormond Woman. I love some fruits, especially the ones that are in this one and the floral notes. It's just really pretty. It is a spring and summer stunner. It's very subdued. You're not gonna get a huge sillage with this. You're not gonna knock somebody out, but it will be in your scent bubble and it just makes me feel put together. Some fragrances just made me feel put together and this is one of them. All right, I only have one more full bottle and this is definitely the most affordable of all the ones that I'm gonna talk about. And this is the newest fragrance launch from Beauty Pie. When I saw this on their Instagram, I was like, they, they kind of hinted at it for a while and then when they finally released it, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to get my nose on that. So what I did was I ordered the Duo. It came with a body butter in the same scent and this is La Smash Santal. So I got the body butter and I got this. Now I will say, if you want to do that same thing, please beware that the body butter is full of glitter. I did not know that. I don't know if it's, I don't even know if it's listed in the description, but I was like shimmering for quite a while after I applied it. The scent is great and it definitely lingers more than a lot of my other body butters, but I don't love having glitter on my body. So that part is not my favorite. Just be aware of that. But the perfume, and this is, says it's an eau de parfum. It has top notes of almond powder, cardamom, tea leaves, 
middle tonka bean vanilla pods lavender and base notes creamy sandalwood musk and white suede now i was a little scared for the lavender it's not what sticks out the most this is kind of like the lavender that you get in the lieb ysl libra intense which i love it's kind of like that it's not the candle lavender or the essential oil lavender or something you're supposed to spray on your pillow at night to help you sleep better. I don't like that kind of lavender. This is not it. This is definitely a deeper lavender and it is in the back. And to me, what shines is the cardamom and the almond powder, which I don't know quite how that's different from almonds and the sandalwood. It's really pretty. It's a little different, but I do kind of get a little bit of, again, a reminiscent from, from the leave intense. None of the Beauty Pie fragrances last that long on me. And even though this is not an eau de toilette, I still don't get an extensive amount of wear. But I do like at night, even though I don't like the gl glitter that's in the body butter, I do like to layer them and kind of wear this one almost as a bedtime scent because it does have a little bit of a comforting feel to it. And I think that might be the lavender in the background mixed with the sandalwood and they're all very like soft notes nothing harsh in this it's very pretty it again it's not long lasting but it's also beauty pie so if you have the membership it's 39 dollars, and i think you even get some kind of deal if you buy it with the body butter as well so i want to talk about that la smosh la smosh listen to me la smosh la smash <laughs> santal all right now let's get into the decants those are all of my full bottles and i'm going to talk about the decant that will very soon become a full bottle because this has honestly i think the only thing that kept me from purchasing this full bottle upon first sniff of the decant versus the ormond jane was the price difference because they're about 95 dollars difference in price but this is a baby of two of my very favorite perfumes which i will talk about this is the brand new release from bdk perfumes and it is Vini leather y'all now right now you can only get this at harrods or from the BDK website. But I am, I don't know if you can tell, almost done with my five mil. Like I wore this probably four or five days in a row. I could not stop with this. Oh man, this is gonna be hard to say. I almost said this is now my favorite BDK fragrance of all time, but I don't know. The Grease Charnel Extract is tied. Definitely, oh my goodness y'all, this is so good. So this is said to be a powdery white floral Vanilla, violet, leather, iris, amber, woody, animalic, and floral fragrance. It has violet, pink pepper, jasmine, tube rose, and orange blossom. Same trio of florals that's in the Ormond Jane in the middle, just like the Ormond Jane. Vanilla, orris, leather, benzoin, oak, and patchouli. Here's the thing. I do not get an overabundance of patchouli, so if you don't like patchouli, it's not like the patchouli oil. You're not going to feel like you were transported to the 70s. I love that, but I don't get that in this at all y'all this is if these two perfumes i'm about to tell y'all had a baby and they're some of my very favorite perfumes that i have decants of and one of them is going to be a full bottle but it's it's become my celebratory bottle so until i have something to really celebrate celebrate i'm not getting a full bottle guerlain queer beluga which is my favorite guerlain ever i've gone through many decants it is a gorgeous powdery suede scent and celine black tie if those two had a baby to my nose you get bdk vanilla leather i do not get a lot of leather in this i get more of a suede scent hence the comparison to queer beluga it does have a lot of similarities of black tie the difference is this lasts way longer black tie lasts nothing on my skin i love it but the only reason i don't have a full bottle is because i can't warrant that price for something that lasts like two to three hours on my skin which it only does that, but it is a gorgeous vanilla suede type scent. And when you put those two together, this is what you get. And this one lasts way longer. It doesn't last longer than Queer Beluga because that one is the longest lasting, girl, longest lasting, I've been talking too much, Guerlain on me, but it lasts just as long. And it's so beautiful. I cannot speak high enough about this scent and I cannot wait. To purchase it in a full bottle let's talk about a decant that i bought simply because of the name not really thinking that i would like it and actually ended up really liking it and this is from a line that i believe is fairly newer to chanel and it is edinburgh so again this is just a 10 mil decant but when i look at 
the description on Fragrantica. Apparently this whole line was designed as light and refreshing eau fraiches. So they're not gonna be like heavy. In fact, I believe it's an eau de toilette. But the inspiration was drawn from destinations that have strong ties with Chanel. And this one is the power and mystery of the Highlands firmly rooted to the land. It says, Gabrielle Chanel discovered Scotland through the Duke of Westminster, with whom she had a love affair until 1930. She sought refuge in the wild and majestic countryside, bathed in an intensely white light. Revitalized by the endless expanses of green, she went salmon fishing, played cards with Winston Churchill and Vera Bate, and shared her time between the Duke's three properties in the Highlands. Inspirations were Fair Isle sweaters with multicolored geometric patterns, tartan wool berets, and tweed jackets. And this is a woody aromatic scent as comfortable as a tweed jacket. The reason I wanted it is because Scotland is one of Chad and I's favorite places in the entire world. And the reason I thought I didn't wasn't going to like it is because it has a couple of notes that are my least favorite, being juniper berries and lavender. But I love this is the greenest fragrance I have in my collection, and there is something about it that I absolutely adore. If you are a fan of cypress, juniper berries, cedar, lavender, vetiver, musk, and vanilla, or just a fan of green fragrances in general, this is a must, a must in your collection. Very unisex, doesn't last as long. I it lasted longer than I thought it was going to. I got three to four hours out of it but it's just, it's not as expensive as a lot of Chanel's, probably because it is in the Eau Fraiche line. But y'all, this when this is gone, I will purchase the full bottle because this is special to me. Mm. So I haven't put anything on today. This is gonna be my scent of the day. And because it is oh, an Eau Fraiche, you can kind of overspray and it's not gonna be too much. I love it so much. And that's it. That is my July perfume haul of decants and full bottles. I will have everything listed and linked below per usual. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if y'all picked up anything in July and stay tuned for next month's haul because I'm sure I'll have something to talk about. And Abby and I will be doing our live probably mid-August, so stay tuned for that as well. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.